Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to this uh, live stream that's recorded, that's posted, that's uploaded, and then live streamed. Um, it's, I don't know if it's the Ministry of Fiber in Scotland, or or maybe uh, Craig has uh, you know got got a bit of bad luck on his side, or maybe I've got a bit of bad luck on my side. But Facebook does not like uh, what we're trying to do here with uh, from Scotland. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to record this, then post it um, as soon as it's uh, recorded. Uh, as a as a quick intro. Um, I've, I've known about Craig for, uh, for many years. Um, the first time I, uh, I saw uh, you know, anything related to him was uh, his white bucky with uh, some cycling pictures and sports pictures on the side um, when I was doing the, the Sony to see. And I thought, man, now that would be cool to do. I think I should be a, you know, a photographer or something like that. I, it did, it, it had to wait for a couple of years, but um, you know, eventually I'm doing uh, uh, what I love with the photography. And um, I just want to say thank you very much to Craig Dutton for um, for joining us today and um, he's going to give us uh, his viewpoint on on what he loves and why he's uh, still doing it. Craig over to you. Oh, thanks Quentin. Um, you know that that Bucky actually was was quite cool. Um, it was it was a nice uh, it was a nice idea that that sort of kind of flashed up in my head and I may have borrowed inspiration from somewhere i really don't remember but um it did turn some eyes and uh, it was nice driving it around yeah it, it definitely um, was a good calling card um you know yeah i still uh, remember it uh, today it possibly contributed to <clears throat> what one might have called my success um uh, like i said to you the other day you know success is in the eye of the beholder um i, I look i look up and um look at people who are above me and think, oh my goodness, I'd love to be like them. And they, yet there are people that um, are below me and I don't mean to put it like that, but um, who also look at me going, oh my goodness, I wish I was him. Um, and I think we should all just embrace where we are at in, in the present and, um, and make the best of our situation. Um, so the, the presentation, <clears throat> so to speak, that I, I want to give today is um, about where where I've been, um, or what, where I've come from, um, and how the heck did I get to where I am now, or wherever that is. Um, what I'd like to do is is try and impart some knowledge, um, some some learnings that I've had along the way. And um, it's not so much about me and what I've achieved, but what I've learned. Um, so this is me. Um, I am a professional photographer. And um, I've been doing this for 16 odd years now. Um, it's been a great journey. It's been a tough journey uh, in many respects, but uh, I don't think I would change anything um, at this point in time. I live in Inverness uh, in Scotland. Um, and uh, well, it's, a very, it's such a beautiful place. Uh, it looks too sunny for Scotland. To offer, um, it's not as rainy as people think it is, uh, but it can get cold. And it looks, it looks too sunny. Have, it looks too that? sunny for Scotland. Too sunny. Oh, that's, that's exactly it. And one thing we do have, I must say, on, on, on both sides of the, of the, oopsie, of the, um, uh, the calendar is uh, we have very late sunrises in winter and very early sunsets. So you don't have to worry about waking up too early or going to bed too late to get your sunset. Um, and yet on the flip side in summer, uh, we literally almost have 24 seven as light. Um, I think around about two o'clock, one, half past one in the morning, it goes to twilight and, um, and then it starts to get light again. Uh, so we have long days. Uh, I'm a Land Rover fanatic. I am a fly fishing fanatic and I am a sailing fanatic um, and photography is one of those things that I do as well. To be honest with you, um, I, I would almost say that photography, I'm not necessarily a photography fanatic. I love photography. I love what it does, but photography is not what I'm looking at on social media um, or, or those other things. I, um, I have my interests. Photography is my job. Um, which in some ways um, is, is a good thing, in other ways is a bad thing. And having spoken to, or having listened to the presentations that we're, we've had over the last few days, it kind of makes me feel like I need to lift my game and start um, bringing back the passion for photography because it has just become a job and I only 
pick up my camera when I'm working. Um, case in point is I was in um, Australia uh, two months ago, maybe, uh, on a shoot um, there, and I haven't looked at my camera since. My camera goes into the into the cupboard, or my camera bag. I get home, my camera bag goes into the cupboard, and I pull it out the day before I go to my next trip. And um, it's a bit sad. I think I need to lift my game in that department. So my first uh, camera was this uh, Fuji Fine Picks, which I bought in about 2003, 2004. I bought it from um, Shane and Vernon at uh, a camera shop in Cascades in, in Peter Maritzburg. And um, yeah, I was quite stoked, but I wasn't, that wasn't my, my um, entry into, uh, this is, I'm now gonna be a professional photographer. It was far from it. I was just happy to have a camera in my hands. Um, I had, as, as a kid, I, I used to pore over surfing magazines. I was a surfer um, and I just, I just wanted to take photographs. Um, I, I've never desired to be a photographer, but I just wanted to be that guy that takes those photographs because they were so cool. And um, I just lived in, in, in those images. So when I managed to get a, photo, a, a camera, um, you know, I went down to the beach, I took photographs. Um, I went all over and I took photographs of things that I enjoy such as um, cycling, um, motorsports, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the, the things that kind of started this whole thing for me was uh, I was at a motocross meet um, in Durban and Pierre Tosti um, was there. He's quite a legendary surfing photographer. Um, and uh, he was there taking photographs and I had this little muck and drick there and I was taking photographs and I was being an absolute blanket. I mean, it was ridiculous. And I showed him some photographs and he, and he complimented me and he exchanged and he, he, you know, we chatted and it kind of gave me the desire to go further. Um, and it's a lesson that I have taken from the word go is I, I just see it so often people downplay other people's photography. You see it a lot on social media and you know, people knocking people's stuff and there's no need for it. Um, just build up, build people up, and you never know what might come of it. And and that was what changed it for me. You know, he he complimented me on stuff that I'm pretty sure was shocking. Um, but he still complimented me, and I thought, hey, hang on, I might have something here. Yeah, I didn't. But um, it it prompted me to to take a step further, and I, I ended up buying a, a 10D. Uh, at the time, it was a, a prosumer camera. Um, and it, it did the job for, for, for many, many years. In fact, I, I had many 10Ds. Um, one thing I, I found about the 10Ds is that they weren't very waterproof. Um, so I kept on breaking them and buying another one because they were relatively cheap at the time. Um, but I'd go out shooting the rain and six months later, the, the cameras would break. Um, my 1DX doesn't do that now. My yeah. 1DX. I've, uh, I've still got mine. Here we go. Oh my goodness! I don't know where mine is. I think it's a <laughs> maybe it's just scrap, scrap metal. I don't know. Um, but uh, I once I got my 10 D, I, I ended up buying a hundred four hundred um, lens, um, the Mark One from um, Roger De La Hawk, who's a legendary uh, wildlife photographer, and um, I started shooting a lot. And I started shooting stuff that I know and stuff that I that I was interested in. And, and that's one first thing that I would advise anybody that wants to take up photography and wants to hone their skills is shoot what you know. Um, when you know surfing or when you know cycling or ballet or whatever it might be, you know when the crux of that sport happens. Um, and it's the viewers that you're trying to please. And if, you, if you're taking a photograph of something where the crux hasn't happened, the viewer knows that because the viewer is in, invariably the, the expert. Um, so shoot what you know and, and you'll become good at it. Um, and a, a, a lesson that I learned very early in my um, career as well was to go manual. Um, I don't shoot manual now, um, but going manual back then helped me understand what the camera does and what the camera um, how it responds to certain things. Um, 
uh, I used to do uh, uh, kayaking, you know, K1 kayaking at the time, um, well, actually a few years later, but one of the lessons that a person taught me as well with kayaking was, oh, you want to start kayaking? Let's take your paddle, drop it on the side of the, the, um, the dam, and let's go out with no paddle. And once you learn how to balance with your core, instead of trying to use your crutch, you become a better paddler. And it's the same thing with photography. Once you, 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 let, you let go of the crutch and you let go of all the auto um, uh, features that the camera has and you start to understand what happens when you change the ISO or you change shutter speed or the umpteen things that you can change, you start to understand photography. Um, then you can start working on composition and everything else that goes with it. Um, so I shot a lot of surfing, I shot a lot of cycling, um, and I started to get, I started to get better. Um, I wasn't fantastic, but what, what the, the difference was is I was there. And I was there taking photographs. I was at cycling events taking photographs, um, and other people weren't. And people were liking my photographs because they were the only photographs. Um, and that gave me inspiration to just carry on. You know, I started selling my photographs. Oh man, in the early days, I used to go to a, a sort of a cycling, mountain biking national, shoot tons of photographs, run out to the one hour Photoshop, print off two, 300 photographs, come back to the, to the event while everyone's kind of wrapping up, lay them out on the table and hope I was gonna sell something. And I'm pretty sure I ran at a loss every time. But that type of stuff got my name out there. Um, the images were not good. They were shocking. Um, but they, they got my name out there. And I, I kind of started getting known. Um, I struck up a, a small uh, deal with Go Multi Magazine um, at the time. Um, honestly, it was actually Go Cycle first, and then it was Go Multi. Um, I think they paid me like 300 300 to 500 bucks a month for unlimited photographs from me. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, you know. It sounds like I, a great deal, but not for you. <laughs> but I was happy, you know, I was happy and I was getting my images published and, and that gave me, once I was getting published in GoMulti, I was able to then contact um, Sean Bardnos at Bicycling at the time and, and it just one thing led to another and I was getting published and my rates were going up and my imagery was getting better. Um, but everybody's got to start at the bottom. Everybody, everybody is going to give away free images at some stage. Everybody is going to charge next to nothing for their services and everybody needs to get over it. It's going to happen. People are going to come and undercut you, lift your game or change your genre. Um, there's just no way of getting around stuff like that. Absolutely. I mean, I, um, I completely, uh, completely agree. You know, you, you hear um, so often, I mean, almost a daily basis where um, uh, guys that are in the groups are saying, oh, it's so tough. Uh, you know, this guy's got one camera and one flash and they're charging nothing and they've got a photo book and a, and a this and a that. At the end of the day, you know, if, if, if people are, if your work is the same as everyone else's, what you then need to do is, is find that niche, find that point of difference and just improve, get better. You know, if the people with, um, with the drive and the desire and the passion will, will always be the ones that, um, you know, that, that get further, you know, and the harder you work, uh, the, the, the better your, your work will be, you know, and, and also then when you, when you find that passion, you stop worrying about the people that are, that are coming in and supposedly stealing your, your, your sort of clients, et cetera. You know, you focus on the work and, and providing great images. Yeah, it's it's a hundred percent. And um, you know what has happened in in the last ten years is um, the the digital space has just um, exploded, and not necessarily digital photography, but but um, digital delivery. Um, and you know nowadays we we're, we're able to get out our images uh, in in record time, and that's kind of the those little incremental things that you can do to your photography to to um, make yourself more valuable. You know, if, if you're shooting the same old stuff that everybody else is shooting and you, you're one of 10 photographers at a, um, at a cycling event or whatever it might be that you're shooting, if your images aren't as good as the person next to you, but you get your images out first, your images are actually better than the person next to you because you're, 
you, your image is the first thing that people are seeing and that's the biggest reaction. That's the, oh wow, that's, that was awesome. Oh, that was that event. And then I see some other great images three days later and they go, oh yeah, that was from that event. Um, it does, it, 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 it makes such a huge difference. And, and, and uh, I'll talk about my workflow a bit later, but that is what has created my workflow. And that's, that's kind of how I've made a difference in my, in my, um, in my industry anyway. Um, sure, I'm rambling along here and I'm not getting through images. Well, um, so, what you can do is while you ramble, just hit next every now and then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> So, you know, I, I've shot a lot of, a lot of stuff, especially in the early days, as is Greg Minow and his Honda um, at one of the, the nationals. Um, and, and again, I was shooting subjects that I know, and I got good at that. You know, in my, in my, in my mind, I was good at that, and that's what kept me going and kept me pushing forward. Um, I did do some amazing trips, um, and, and I think, I'm going to say all of them, but maybe most of them were for free. Um, but they gave me great imagery and I had a great time and, um, yeah, and it, it just helped build my portfolio. Um, that image there was a, it was an amazing trip from on, on the wild coast, uh, from Port Edward to Port St. John's, a couple of surf ski paddlers decided that they were going to just do a, a multi-day trip. And I think it was a three days, the guys paddled. It was phenomenal. We had, a, we had an amazing experience. Um, I nearly died. But that's another story. That's for it's part, part of the adventure. Yeah, exactly. I, I nearly got ridden over by a boat, but not one of these boats. It was a power boat. It was scary. Anyway, um, this is in um, in in Mozambique, a, a, a surf ski fishing trip up in Mozambique. Uh, I did that with uh, Brett Chalinor from Stealth. Uh, it was an amazing trip. We we had fantastic times. Um, the guys caught a lot of fish, and I got some great photos. I love that image. So cool. Love the. Uh, you know the, the the silhouette and the the sunset colors very very cool. Yeah, and it's one of those those um, those angles that are on 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 the east coast of South Africa you don't get the sunset over the sea, um, but in in Mozambique especially up there um, uh, at Nyamban, because of the way the, the the coastline works, you do get a bit of that sunset um, you know going up the coastline. Uh, so it worked quite nicely. Um, it was a yeah, it was a great shot. Uh, I love silhouettes. Um, this uh, this shot of of uh, the late uh, Graham Anderson on on Thromby. Um, again, just shooting stuff that I know, shooting stuff that I love, and more often than not, replicating or taking inspiration from what I've seen in the countless magazines that I've poured over over many years. Um, I started to develop my own style I, I started to understand what i wanted to get out of photography and my, my imagery started to improve and my clients started to improve and I, I started enjoying myself um what i was doing more often than not is i was looking for angles that people hadn't shot before um or just you know you get a duck diving um shot of a of a surfer um, how can I make that different? You know, uh, you get a a, a kayaking uh, a photograph of guys going over a waterfall. Guys don't go over waterfalls in, in K1s and K2s. That's not something you would do if you were a saint. Um, but my mates here um, were having some fun and they decided to go over the little waterfalls outside Howick on the Amgani River. Um, and then just shooting images that have impact, you know, um, in more ways than one. You know, these guys got uh, smacked in the face by, by a heavy wave on the um, Amkamas River at the Amco. Um, just again, having fun and um, enjoying life, really. Um, the Amco is an amazing river to shoot. As I said to you, I love silhouettes. Um, they, they, they have the ability to tell so many stories, yet um, they there's not much color and not much else in them. Um, but you do, you, when you see a silhouette, you kind of, I don't know, it's almost like peaceful for me. It's almost tranquil. Um, this shot of, uh, of a guy paddling on the um, Gany River down in Durban. I was just going to uh, say that it's, uh, uh, you know, before you said that it was tranquil, I was, uh, was going to say whenever the, uh, I see those types of silhouette shots and even the one on the beach, um, it's just calming. You know, there's just this, <laughs> This quiet, uh, you know, and it's so interesting that you pretty much said the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I, I, I love them. 
Um, I've shot uh, 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 numerous uh, covers in my in my life. I, I was doing some work for uh, SA Paddler, uh, quite a lot of work for them. Um, I was, I, I may have been a, like a staff photographer of some sort. I think they were paying me a retainer to shoot whatever um, they needed out of me. And um, it, it, again, it got my images published and it got me out there and it, it helped me build my profile and put me to where I am today. And, and I thank the people that were involved um, particularly John McCarthy, who who was instrumental in getting me on board and and shooting for them. Um, it, the interesting uh, thing with uh, this this photograph here, let me just get my pointer up. Um, is is that shooting star there um, was actually a shooting star, um, and I don't know if you can actually see it in your screens, but it um, it was a night shot. I don't know why we decided to do a paddling shoot at night. I really don't remember. Um, but the that, that uh, the shutter speed was a wee bit slow, and um, we had a shooting star happen, and it just fitted the whole story perfectly um, for the magazine, and yeah, it, it worked out. What what was the shutter speed on that? I, I genuinely I don't know, but I would say that it was probably about a fiftieth or, or a sixtieth. Uh, a, 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 a shooting star happens pretty fast. Um, yeah. So it might, might have been a bit slower. Um, I don't remember. I think there, there's some astro uh, photographers out there that will uh, be able to tell us that, but I, yeah. I, it's I, too long. It's, um, obviously, the, the, the um, uh, rear curtain sink uh, with the, the flash um, yes. has meant that, because um, I, initially I was looking at the, the star trails, um, yes. not the shooting star, and I'm thinking, Man, that's that that's a long time for that camera to be and for the paddler to be that still. And then I thought, yeah. okay, well, hold on, it's a rear curtain sink, so you've moved, but when you've flashed it, uh, it's uh, it's frozen the the paddler. You've actually just just um, it, it wasn't one sixtieth of a second. That's uh, that's absurd to think about it. And and um, now I remember how we shot that photo. Um, it was uh, I was standing in in a dam with a tripod, you know, the camera on the tripod in a dam. Um, we had the the shutter open for quite a while. I would say maybe thirty seconds to a, not not as much as a minute. Um, but again, other guys will will be able to put input on that. And then at some point, I got uh, Clint to paddle across. When he got within frame, I just got him to kind of hold that position and just glide through the image. And I popped the flash, and that's how we got that shot. Fantastic. Gee, was, I, I totally forgotten how, how I shot that. So thanks for the, for the <laughs> no <reminder. worries. laughs> Um I I've shot some 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 pretty nice images, um, and a lot of them have been by I would say luck. Um and and when I say luck, I, I kind of like this image here, I knew what I wanted, but what I got was uh, was a thousand percent nicer than what I what I wanted. Um and this is just one of those images was exactly like that. Uh, and nowadays, I could probably replicate that and, and knowing what I want and get close to it. But back then, um, which was probably over 12 years ago, um, that would have been a lucky shot. But I got it. And, uh, and, um, and it was a cover in a book, uh, which I was really stoked about. It was my, probably my first book cover. And it was a... A proud moment. Um, I've, I've had some amazing trips. Um, I think I said that before and I'll say it again. And, and I've had some amazing photograph opportunities within those trips, like this one, where um, we were paddling from uh, Inyaka Island uh, to Santa Maria mainland. And um, and this massive cold front just pulled in and it was almost surreal and third worldly. Um, Storm yeah, chases uh, on a kayak uh, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was quite scary, um, but it was scary because you didn't know what was coming. You didn't know. I, I've never seen anything like this before. And, and we were just <laughs> paddling balls to the wall to get back to our base so that we didn't get caught up in what was coming. But it wasn't as bad as what we expected. Um, but no, no doubt, it was just a great, a great experience. Um, I, I do enjoy shooting a lot of stuff with foreground, uh, well, stuff in the foreground and a shallow depth of field. 
um, just to create that interest. Um, you can still see that there are, are um, adventure races in the background, but the skull in the foreground just gives it a little bit more, um, you know where you are and, and it's arid and hard and hot and dangerous. <clears throat> Um, around about 2006, I shot the uh, Comrades Marathon. Uh, they asked me to to be one of their team members to shoot the, the event. Um, it was a great experience, and I learned quickly from chatting to them that it was a nightmare organizing this lot um, of photographers, and I offered to take it up um, and be their photo manager and just organize everything for them, um, which I did in 2007, I think it was. Um, and that was a great experience. Uh, I pulled in some really good photographers. We um, all had a job, you know, it was either leading uh, men, leading ladies, uh, branding, sponsors, um, you name it, each guy had a, had a, had a job. And it was fantastic. Uh, we did a good job. I, I personally think we lifted the game um, in photography delivery for comrades. You know, I had my wife in the in the media center, um, collating all the images, getting them up, getting them online as quick as possible. You know, the runners were still out there, and we were getting images up online. I had a runner on a motorbike, meeting all the photographers in various areas. Um, collecting cards from them, running back into uh, Peter Maritzburg or Durban, wherever this, the media center was at the time, um, uploading images and just, again, raising the bar, getting the images out there fast because that's what people want uh, more than anything these days. Uh, this is, is one of those images from, from Comrades. Um, and again, this is one of those lucky images. Um, you know, with Clint jogging my memory of how I shot that paddling image. This is exactly how I shot this image. Uh, Longish shutter speed, uh, waiting for the guys to, to approach as they got closer, I popped the flash um, and froze these guys in the image. And I was, I was very happy with it and it got used a lot and it's been um, stolen a lot, uh, <laughs> but I don't care. I love it. I, I think it's I, awesome. I don't have the time or patience to run after people if they've stolen my images. Um, use it, whatever. You know, if you're making millions of it, great. But if it's just another blog, um, which it is many, many times, then then happy days. London was a dot ball for me. Um, straight after moving to um, uh, uh, straight after the comrades, I moved to London. Um, and I kind of, I moved there on a high. I moved there thinking that I was well known. Everybody knew I was, I was being published. Um, I didn't have any problem getting work. I moved to London expecting that and I got slapped in the face. Um, I had zero work in London, even though I'd been recommended by, um, uh, I think it was uh, Mark Finch at the time uh, from from Bicycling and, and Runners World. You know, he put me in touch with the guys in London and I got nothing. And it was a bit of a wake up call. Um, and it made me realize that I've actually got to go out and look for work rather than, than um, work just come to me. And I didn't take any photographs in London. That's why there's a black page here because it was absolutely a dot ball. Um, I, I ended up moving back to South Africa 18 months later and I picked up work again. Um, I, I shot the, um, the, what is this? The change of life cycle tour, uh, for quite a few years. Um, one of the most amazing experiences and these people spared no expense in giving me the tools to get the images that I needed or that they needed. Um, and as a result, I got great imagery and, um, again, that imagery, getting the images out started to lift my profile a bit and, and help me get more work. Um, I, I, yeah, I had some great trips. This, uh, this trip was uh, on the Rovos Rail ride, I think it was called. I don't remember. Um, it was a, basically a bike ride from, from uh, the guys hopped on a train and they rode several stages on bicycles um, going up to Zambia. And this is on the Makhari uh, plant. Yeah, fantastic uh, part of the world. One, um, Probably, I would almost say one of the highlights of my uh, professional career has been the, has been um, the ability to teach people photography. Um, I developed a course 
for uh, game rangers uh, or guides. Um, I developed a course to help them become better guides through photography. And the idea was quite simple. If the people on their, on their vehicles are able to take good photographs, everyone's happy. But if they're placing their, their vehicles, um, looking into the sun, uh, and there's a, a, a fantastic moment happening, be it a, a, a lion cool or whatever it might be, um, people are gonna get irritated uh, and they're not gonna get as good at images. And ultimately in this digital environment, um, good images, are a good are good marketing for you know on Facebook etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So, I was teaching these guys um, the fundamentals of photography, and it was a fantastic experience. I I learned a lot, um, and I learned a lot with teaching them. And I was very grateful to get the help um, that I had from Canon. Uh, Roger Mason um, was superb. Every time I needed gear for it, he would um, help me out, and that was. Um, was fantastic because then you know everyone had cameras and everyone was able to to learn and and watching these students have that sort of aha moment was fantastic um, and you know just one of the things that um, one of those big aha moments was this this image you know for, for all intents and purposes a a silhouette is not a silhouette until you make it a silhouette um, our, our eyes can't see silhouettes so when we are um, uh, uh, standing around and you see the sun setting a bit and you see a bit of color changing, there's the time to go out and, and, and find that silhouette. And um, just showing the, 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 the students what we can pull out of what would seemingly be a normal daylight type of environment it was great. And yeah, we had a lot of fun on this particular shoot. But there's, those game drives are amazing. And I, I, I was shooting, all, I was doing all of this for uh, in the Maritaba uh, Nature Reserve um, for the NJ Moore uh, Academy, and oh man, that that reserve is just phenomenal. It's it's absolutely phenomenal. And incidentally, this is one of those another one of those unpaid jobs. Um, I was paid in bed nights, um, which isn't a bad thing because I ended up going back there a few times and and enjoying the place even more because it was very special. Um, in 2009, uh, Sean Bardenost, um, who I think he was editing Trade Magazine at the time, um, contacted me and asked me if I would like to shoot the uh, first BMX World Cup that was hap that happened in South Africa. Um, it was in Peter Maritzburg, and naturally I jumped at it. Um, I was a BMXer in my days, um, early days, but I had never shot BMX, um, so it was a bit of a I was a bit out of my depth at, at the time, but I wasn't going to show anyone that. Um, and um, I went and shot the first event. Uh, it worked out well. Um, I was asked to come back and shoot the, the Worlds. Uh, incidentally, this is um, uh, Sufison Klapo. He's um, South Africa's most successful BMXer uh, to date. Um, and yeah, he was a good guy. He rode well, um, had a few big crashes. Um, Shortly after I started um, shooting him and uh, kind of faded off the back uh, from there on. But he, he did well. He, he uh, at the Peter Maritzburg World Champions, uh, he podiumed. I don't remember what his position was, a second or third. But yeah, he was a, he was a South African's BMX darling at the time. Um, the, the BMX photography kind of went from uh, World Cup to me doing world championships the next year. And then um, I offered my services if, you know, asked them if they'd like a permanent guy on the tour with them. They said yes, um, to my surprise. Um, and I haven't looked back. That, um, that was in 2010 and I'm now what, 2020 and I'm still shooting on, on the tour. Um, and it, it has been a, an amazing experience. Um, and one thing I would, say from this experience is go out and get the work go and go and look for the work go and ask for the work um don't expect the work to come to you because it doesn't come to you i've i have first-hand experience of that um uh, so i mean so often i think i'm better than um what's the word i'm looking for um 
I don't need to go out and get work. People can just come and ask me to to work for them. And and I I, I just get knocked back a few notches and realize that it doesn't work, especially when the bank account starts to get empty. And um, then you have to go out there and find the work. Um, and my my good friend Max Kluwer, um, you know, once said to me, it's quite possible because people think that you're an obtainium. Um, and it, it may just be, you know, it may just be that people don't want to approach you because they think you're better than that or whatever it might be. And, and the truth is nobody knows what you're prepared to do and for what price. Because as a photographer, I have a price, but I also have a price. I, whatever it is. Sometimes I shoot for thousands, sometimes I shoot for, for toys. It, Absolutely. It and I think it's, um, there's, there's two things that, um, that I want to uh, pull out. The, the one is, um, you know, you, it's, it's important to just ask, you know, the, all they can, the worst they can, that can happen is they'll say, no, we've got someone. Yeah. Um, they may say, absolutely, come along, you know, we'll even give you gear. Um, yeah. so, so that's the one thing. And then the other thing is um, the, the, the shooting for bed nights. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, sometimes you get caught up in the whole, no, no, this is my price. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you don't pay me, I'm not doing it. But, you know, what, what I found is that if you, if you do those trade exchanges, it can get you to a point where you've got images from, from a, um, a venue or a location or a client that you would never have had before, yeah. unless you said, that's cool. I'll, I'll be there. And, and I think the bed nights thing is, is a, is a very strong, uh, very strong point there looking for those, those trade exchanges if they work. Yeah, no, for sure. And coming back to the bed nights um, thing and, and, and teaching those, those ranges, it was an incredibly valuable service or product that, um, that the, the lodge was, was providing to their, um, to their ranges. And I would, I would say that if there are photographers, and there are, there are many, many photographers who have great relationships with, um, with lodges, et cetera, out there, uh, go and offer them the service because they need it. Their guides, without a doubt, need it. Um, and it, it can turn into bed nights, it can turn into money, whatever it is, but, um, but do it. I know for a fact that when I was doing this, you know, uh, we were talking about making it um, or approaching for Gaza and, and trying to make it part of the, the official curriculum. Um, it didn't go that far, but put it out there. It, 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 might, it might work for you, it might not, but I can tell you now what it will do is if you do get the work, it will be incredibly rewarding. There is nothing more rewarding than going out on a game drive with a bunch of game rangers um, and, and they all know stuff. And, they, and it's, it's a totally different experience. Um, one thing I, I managed to, to learn out of that, um, well, I didn't learn so much, but I experienced it was tracking. And I did a four day tracking course while I was in one of the courses. Um, I just stayed, stayed extra because it was a, a guy who came in and did a tracking course and, and we spent four days out there tracking and it was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. The, the, the experiences will enrich your life. Um, so BMX has been incredible. Uh, for the last 10 years, I have predominantly shot BMX. Um, I've, I've become part of the furniture with them. Um, I think there's probably only three or four of us of the original crew of, of the entire road crew that, that, that runs this event. Um, there's only three or four of us that are, are still around. The, the, the crew has changed um, ownership. Um, the guy that originally employed me, uh, went under and took me for hundreds of thousands of rands, um, which nearly sunk me. Uh, but the crew has stayed, uh, uh, some of the crew that has been around are still there. Again, Max Kluwer being one of them. We're good buddies on the, on, the, on the road trip and we have a lot of fun and we have a lot of fantastic experiences. And watching kids like this guy here, uh, Nick Kimon from, from the Netherlands, achieve a, a dream is something amazing. And, and, it, and you're part of it. You're not, just, you're not just watching him. You're actually there. I mean, I was, you know, when he turned around, I was able to give him a big fat hug and congratulate him because it's, it's such an emotional experience for everyone. Um, I get to travel wide and far on these events, uh, as far down as 
uh, Argentina and of course up into Americas and, and Europe and earlier on this year I was in in Australia the Argentinian crowd is phenomenal um, they're absolutely insane there's hundreds and thousands of kids that want autographs um, from these people it makes them it makes these BMXs into into little uh, superheroes and um, you know this guy is a Brazilian chap and and People were all over him, and and, and it's, it's awesome. It's so great to see the smiles on these, because these are kids. You know, these are only 20-year-olds, 22-year-olds, some is 18, and now they're in, in superhero status um, on, on the global scene. You know, they're not just locals on their own track and, and heroes on their own track. Um, shooting world championships. Um, oh, at that is awesome. Places. Love that. Look at that, the, the, the eyes. It's just like, ah. <laughs> I know this this little girl. Uh, she she won that event, uh, her, her world championship uh, place. Um, this was in in the USA, um, so on home soil, uh, she nailed it. And and this image actually got published um, in Bicycling uh, USA as well. Um, it's it's incredible. It's it's yeah, it's a lot of fun. And and like I say, watching. Friends achieve their, their dreams like this uh, Frenchie, uh, Sylvain Andre. Superb guy. Um, this image was shot in uh, Baku in Azerbaijan at the World Championships there. And, and he won the World Championship event there um, to, to watch the tears rolling down his face in, in unbelief when he won that event was, uh, was very special. He's very... I, he's not a close friend, but he's one of my close friends when I'm on tour. Um, and, and he's a hell of a nice guy. And he, he also pays me to take photographs of him, which makes him even closer. Um, shooting BMX is, is easy because it's on a little track and you can get around and you can shoot a lot of stuff, but it's hard because the stuff can get monotonous very quickly and you've got to hunt for images. You can't just sit around in one place taking images you really got to look um so you're always you're always looking like this image here i i knew that that sun was going to be setting by the by the ramp and it was going to be silhouetting the riders on the hill um so that you had that sense of oh there are people up on the hill waiting to go and there are people on the track racing um you you just got to be hunting for images all the time your clients do not want one image they want a hundred images and they want different images um it doesn't help you sitting around in one place the whole time. Um, and this photograph leads me into um, another aspect of, and, and that is light. You know, this image here was, the light was really bad um, and it's bad because the track is lit, um, but you get into that dusk slash night period where the light isn't just where it should be. Um, but thankfully our cameras are, are amazing and we don't battle with light um, as much as what the older equipment used to. I was um, at some stage of my career. Uh, I was I was being trapped by my own equipment. Um, I used to fish. I, I mean, fish. I used to uh, shoot with a flash quite extensively. And what ended up happening is I was trapped by where my where, where I placed my flash. It was off camera flash. I put my off camera flash go find a spot and shoot some great imagery. And then I'd find through half the day of, um, of shooting, I've only actually shot four different images. Um, my client does want four different images. Uh, and I was sort of working myself into a bit of a hole. I was getting some nice images. Um, this isn't particularly a nice image, but it tells a story. Um, but I, I was putting flash in there and I could only stand there to get that shot. Uh, uh, otherwise I have to go and move my flash. And that means crossing the track. Um, it's an effort. It was an effort and it was trapping me. But I did get some nice images out of that. And um, I mean, this girl here, uh, Merle van Bentham, oh my goodness, she's got the most beautiful eyes in the whole wide world. And, and if, you, if you manage to, to, to capture that, it's fantastic. And the flash was doing that, but I was being trapped. What I, I, I actually got a bit of a, a wake up call. Um, I nearly lost the, the UCI uh, contract. Um, they didn't really tell me why. They just said the images that I was shooting, they, they weren't, you know, it wasn't what they were looking for um, at that stage. 
And I kind of realized that that was my problem. I was being a bit trapped by my, um, by my equipment. So I left my flash at home and uh, started shooting natural light, everything. And, and it's, it's changed it's changed everything um, in, in terms of how I shoot now. I very rarely pick up a flash, very rarely. In fact, I never ever take my off-camera flash to work anymore. Um, I, I might sometimes put a, a speed light on my camera, but honestly, a, a one in a hundred shoots, I'll use a speed light. I'd rather use um, ambient light. Um, so I was, I was able to now move around a lot more. I was able to shoot more. Um, and not really worry about how um, I'm going to lug all this damn equipment. And flying with all this equipment was a nightmare as well. But once I started to learn that if you if you over um, if you use exposure compensation and you compensate for the for the subject that you want to shoot and forget about everything else, um, it doesn't matter if the if the if the background is blown out because they don't care about the background. They care about the subject. So. Um, Exposure compensation was the thing that kind of changed it up for me. And I was starting, I was able now to get that light in under the helmet because shooting in the sun with the light, um, you know, shadows in the, into the helmet, faces are normally black. Um, exposure compensation uh, solved that for me. And it's, it's revolutionized my, my photography. It's the um, same, same sort of thing when you're shooting golf, uh, you know, all the, all the peaks uh, in direct sun, you've got uh, everything's exposed fantastically except half their face, which is completely black. Yes, exactly. Um, but exposure compensation, honestly, it's, it's, it's changed my, my world. Um, I don't know why I didn't shoot like that before. But having said that, um, you know, the flash has a place. It can produce some, some really dramatic images like this one. Um, back when uh, BMX was uh, run on a time trial. Um, it has its place, but um, it was just, it was becoming a nightmare. And traveling with all that gear is really becoming a problem now. Uh, the airlines are definitely getting more strict on, on weights, et cetera, et cetera. So um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, free myself up a bit from, from gear. Uh, much like Kim was saying the other day with, you know, only taking a few lenses out. It makes, it, it makes your world uh, a lot better actually than taking so many lenses and uh, having all this choice. I do um, get to shoot other stuff as well. Um, I shoot uh, a bit of mountain biking, um, but not a heck of a lot, uh, primarily because my main clients are, um, are on, the, on the BMX scene at the moment. Um, one of the things I um, wanted to say about my, my shooting style as well is that I shoot shutter, um, um, shutter speed priority and I shoot auto ISO. Um, I've been ridiculed um, on social media for shooting auto ISO, um, you know, because it's, a, it's an amateur uh, setting. But the bottom line is, when I'm on a shoot, um, the, the, it changes, your environment changes so much. Your light changes, your angles change. One minute there's a rider there and the next minute there is a rider behind you. You've got to turn around and shoot. You don't have time to think about a manual setting for that. Um, so auto ISO has been revolutionary for me. And more often than not, the ISO does not jump to the, to the ranges where it causes a problem for the shoot. So um, I'm, I'm happy with shooting like that. Um, I, I use, as I said earlier, and I use a lot of foreground stuff. Um, and oh, I forgot what I was going to say about this image. Um, but yeah, um, I use shutter speed priority a lot, and I'm able to control various aspects of that of my image. Um, I just don't have the time to, or the brain power, for that matter, to to figure out manual in an environment where things are changing so fast. Like this image here, you know, the shutter speed is uh, slow enough to provide a bit of movement in the arm, but fast enough to still freeze the face. And this person is still moving forward. So I'm obviously panning a little bit with them as well. But um, for me, shutter speed priority, when it comes to the sport I shoot is, it makes all the difference. Um, my workflow. Uh, my workflow uh, revolves around how much beer I can drink after the shoot. And it works like this. Um, I, I really dislike um, shoot, editing 
images the day after the shoot. I, my primary goal is to get my images out as quick as possible um, for two reasons. One is for my clients and two, um, my ride is leaving shortly. And if I'm not on that ride, I'm not going to get back. And if I don't get back, I don't get to hang with the boys and drink beers. Um, I, my, my workflow pretty much revolves around uh, photo mechanic. Uh, it's uh, become a revolutionary change in my in my photography. Um, I go out, I shoot, I come back, I dump images into my into the folders, I import them into uh, Photo Mechanic. I use um, uh, what's it called code replacements to change my my codes. Um, uh, keywords, captions, et cetera, et cetera. Once I'm done with that, I bring it into Lightroom. I do very little um, changing in Lightroom and then I pop it out onto the website as quick as possible. Um, my clients need images fast. That's the bottom line. You know, I have writers who pay me for images. They're running Instagram accounts. Uh, they need images. They, 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 their followers want images and, they, and my clients need images. So um, that's kind of how, how it all works for me. And I'm, I'm happy to provide anybody with any more information. You just drop me a line and I'm, I'm happy to share my workflow with them. Um, what you can do, Craig, is um, at, uh, you know, in, the, in the comments, I'm going to invite um, people to, uh, to post their, their comments um, you know, once we put it up uh, on, on Facebook. Um, and absolutely, I think if people have got questions about uh, workflow, it would be a fantastic spot to... Um, you know, to, to question and, and ask yes. and et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm always happy to help. Um, yeah, like I say, I, I just have a lot of fun um, seeing my, my friends achieve their goals. Um, and I've been published uh, a good few times as well, which has been a blessing. Um, Olympics um, is a. I, mean, I, I was the photo manager at the Olympic Games uh, for the for the Olympic Stadium. Um, it's not much I want to talk about it now, um, but it was a great experience. I learned a lot. Um, I didn't take any photos uh, at Olympics. I wasn't allowed to take photographs at the Olympics. Um, I wasn't accredited to take photographs at the Olympics. You have a specific accreditation and that accreditation allows you to do certain things. If you have an accreditation to work there and you're carrying a camera, you have the wrong accreditation. Um, it was very strict, but it was a fantastic experience and I learned a heck of a lot out of it, which put me in a position that I, I, I am now to be able to take um, a, a be the photo manager for the uh, UCI at all the mountain bike events. Um, and my job there is just to educate photographers um, about the sport before it happens so that they don't get injured out there. Um, that's the bottom line. Uh, I have the um, responsibility sometimes um, to keep people out of the arena um, and some people in we have bib access a yellow bib and a red bib red bib allows people into the arena yellow bibs are unfortunately not allowed into the arena because they a, may not be um, experienced enough to be in there or b they don't represent a a media um, company that is for want of a better word of value to the event to get the images out um, hypothetically speaking, mom and pop's uh, newsletter versus Getty Images. It's a simple, it's a simple um, uh, decision, really. Um, as, I, as I said, I do get to, to shoot a bit of mountain biking at the World Championship events. Um, I, I work primarily for the USA cycling team when I shoot at, at these World Championship events, which is fantastic. Um, these two images, uh, well, that image was from Lenza Heider, uh, in Switzerland, and and these two images are from the recent uh, trip to to the worlds in Canada. Um, it was a fantastic experience. Uh, as Greg Minard doing his thing, um, he's an amazing guy, such a nice person to to be around. And um, yeah, yeah, always always got time for for everyone. Uh, this is a cyclocross event at uh, in Denmark. Um, again, you know with with cyclocross or with, with all these events, you just got to pull all your tricks out the bag. You know, you, 
you you shoot one thing and you think, right, I've done that. You've shot the foreground stuff. Oh, I've done that. Now you shoot slow shutter speed. Oh, I've done that. You just got to be working so hard to, to provide your client with a variety of images. Um, that's what your clients want. That's what they expect. And that's what you're getting paid to do. I saw this um, image on, um, I think you uh, you might have, well, I saw it yesterday, I think it was, or the day before, um, yes. posted on your social media. Okay. It's yeah. just like, ah, fantastic. I love it. It's, it's just, a, it gives the, the energy and the, and the vibe and whatever of, of that particular scene. So I, yeah. I really, really enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, and that, that, that image was uh, shot at 1 50th of a second for the, anyone who, oh no, it wasn't 1 50th, it was 1 30th of a second. If anyone wants to know. Um, so being with Land Rover, uh, uh, being a Land Rover fan, I get to shoot Land Rovers because as I said to you, I shoot what I know. Um, this is my good friend, Patrick Krabach, and he's the editor of Land Rover Monthly Magazine in the UK. Um, he's a South African boy from, from Cape Town. Um, and I've shot a few uh, uh, covers for them as well. And I've been some, on some amazing trips with them. Uh, the, these last few photographs are from a trip that I did with him in the, um, in the north of Scotland where I live. Um, the trip is called the North Coast 500. Uh, it's the most beautiful road you've ever seen in your life. Every time you go around another corner, it's like, oh my goodness, you know, it's phenomenal. Um, so we shot a lot of beautiful stuff. I mean, this is the sea, you know, um, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, I'm just going to run through these images. I don't really need to talk about them because um, I think they speak for themselves. Uh, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. John O'Groat, as, as uh, you guys may know, is the most northerly tip of mainland um, UK. Um, the the old uh, movie, uh, uh, the uh, show, I think it was called... Um, with, with, uh, I don't, I don't remember that, that uh, McEwen character who, who rode his bike from, from the UK to Cape Town. Um, they started at John O'Gratz. Uh, yeah, so anyway, it's a beautiful part of the world and I love living here. Um, and, and again, um, you know, while I'm, whilst I'm doing this, this trip with, uh, with Patrick, we're doing it for a story, we're still having to tell a story. You know, we're still documenting an entire story. Um, for the magazine, we're not just going out there taking photographs. So we're documenting the road, we're documenting where we stayed, we're documenting the distillery that we we visited, so that um, he's got some stuff to uh, to talk about in his in his article. Um, and it, it it ranges from everything from you know the free egg free range egg hut um, in the honesty box um, through to um, fishing on on the rivers and telling great stories. And that, my friend, brings me to the end of my presentation. Oh, that was very cool. You know, it, the, one of the, the amazing things that I'm finding with, uh, with these uh, presentations um, and, and interactions is uh, just the, the amazing stories that are out there and, and how I get, I mean, I've, I've, uh, I've been a photographer for years and, and um, you know, as you were saying, you know, you, you get a bit, and uh, you know you finished your work you you come back and you don't take your camera out for uh for personal stuff you know there's never family yeah. pictures and if there are family pictures they're still in raw in a folder on the server and you, it's been years um, yeah. you know but um you know the the what i'm just so inspired and excited by is uh you know seeing the the work and 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 uh, people just saying just go for it do it try this whatever and it's i, I think uh, if if just two or three people on this, uh, on this group can, can feel inspired and motivated and, and take it further. Um, that's really what, for me, is, is what it's all about. And I, I really want to thank you so much for, uh, for bearing with us with the technical issues, et cetera, um, and, uh, and putting together a fantastic set of images that, um, that I absolutely loved. I think uh, they were amazing and they've certainly given me more uh, sort of excitement and energy, not that I need more. I think I'm a little uh, already, but... Um, yeah, I, I just want to, I want to go out and shoot and, and shoot more and, and that sort of thing. And so I really wanted to say thank you very much. Um, it was awesome. And um, we'll get comments and questions uh, in, the, in the feed once I post this. And um, you can just ask away or answer away from there. So thank you very much. You're a rock star. I really appreciate you. No, thank you. Thank you, Quentin. I appreciate the effort you're putting into this. And, and 
I want to also say um, that I've drawn a lot of inspiration out of this and I definitely need to get out and shoot more and, 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 and fall in love with photography again and, and not let it be a, just a, a means of um, income. Um, and as I said to you guys, or to you, I'm more than happy to help anybody who's looking for help out there. Um, you know, ping me a message, ask me anything. I, I, no secrets here. Uh, I want everyone to succeed. There's, uh, there's, there's more than enough space for all of us. Absolutely. And that's awesome. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And uh, have a good weekend. Yeah, you too. It's snowing yeah. here. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's overcast here. I don't think it's going to snow, but it's a little chilly, but not quite as chilly as there. No, no. Yeah. It's, it's nice. We, we enjoy it. Cool. Okay, bud. Thank, Thank you. Easy. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Cheers.